So uh, let's uh, have a look at uh, how a learner's account looks like. You know, uh, as most of the functions that we have talked about in the teacher's account, they are same for learner's account as well. But there are a few extra functions for learner's account. So I'm going to explain you those extra functions. And the rest of the functions, they are just same as how I explained it to you in the teacher's account. Okay. So for the learners, we again have a different URL. As soon as I type it, press enter, it's going to take me to a new sign up page. Here, uh, the email, uh, see, when we are adding students to the platform, the school is, you know, adding their email ID and the password they want to keep in a Google, in an Excel sheet. And we are uploading that data directly by bulk uploading, as I showed you. So the username and the password that you must have written in those Excel sheets are to be used to log in into the student's account as well. So let's say uh, I have a student, I have entered his email ID and the password. As soon as I click on login, it is going to take me to the dashboard of a student's account. So this is how the dashboard of a student's account look like. So <clears throat> as you scroll down, they can also see their performances and statistics. Okay. So the first function that we are going to talk about is the assignments. So um, what are the different types? of things that uh, teachers might assign to the students that those are worksheets those are flipped resources those are assessments right so or anything that a teacher would be assigning to a child would be under the assignment section so you just have to go there you have to click on it and all the assignments that uh, are related or that have been assigned to the student would be displayed here so you, as uh, you all must be remembering, you know, while uploading a flipped resource, I just uploaded, uh, I give a link for a YouTube video, right? So it's the third one here. As soon as I, as soon as the child clicks on it, it takes you on to the link and they can simply play the video here. Okay. Then the next thing that we are going to look at is assessments. For the assessments, you know, uh, the assessments that you assign to your children, they are in the form of exams. So they can, whenever they want to take their exam, they can click on take exam. As soon as they do that, a different pop-up window appears. And these are the instructions that the teacher might have given to the children. You know, the instructions that are given in the starting that you have to attempt all the questions, or maybe there are these many options that you need to attempt, or any information that you want to give, you need to add in these general instructions. And uh, at the very bottom, there is a button which says start exam. So as soon as I do that, it takes me to a window. And you can see as the teacher must have uh, assigned one hour for this particular assessment. So a timer runs, keeps, you know, keeps on running backward. So this is question one. Then you can go on to the next question, select your answer. You can also mark for review later on. And in the end, when you want to finish submitting your answer, you can just click on finish. And then you click on OK. And as soon as you do that, your test is has been submitted. OK, now uh, this particular test, it now comes under the heading completed because it was uh, previously assigned. So it was coming under the heading assigned section. But now as it has been already done by the students, now it comes under the header completed. So now if you want to look at the results, if the child wants to look at the results of this particular assessment, they can simply click there and their, their score is going to be displayed here. So let's say the student's name was Demosar and uh, I'm sorry, I, 
you know, I got all my questions wrong. So the score, my score says zero out of 15. As you scroll down, uh, they can also see the options that they have marked and the correct answer for all different questions. So, you know, uh, it, it's a very good ex exercise for uh, self-reflection. So after working out an assessment, they can also look at which questions did they get wrong and what was the correct answer for that particular question. Okay. Uh, the third thing was assigning worksheets. So let's say you, a teacher assigned a particular worksheet to a child. So this also comes under the heading assigned tasks. You have to simply click on view. As soon as you do that, the particular worksheet that the teacher might have assigned is displayed here. So there are two buttons on the top of the screen. Uh, one of them is for download and the other one is to print this worksheet. So if you think you, uh, if a child thinks he, they want to print the worksheet and solve it by hand, they can also do that. If they want to download it and, you know, annotate and solve the worksheet, uh, uh, using you know uh, digitally they can also do that then when they are done on the right hand side of your screen you can see this uh, it says assign date assigned by submission date and at the bottom of this there is a uh, uploading option so the worksheet that the child has already worked out let's say if the child has worked out digitally you can directly choose that particular file and upload it here and let's say if the child takes a print out of it and wants to submit it now, so they can just click a photo of the worksheet that they have solved and they can simply upload that particular photo here. And you they simply need to click on upload. So as soon as they do that, their worksheets are being uploaded and these would be visible to the teachers and they can, uh, the teachers can mark uh, how many questions or, uh, you know, have the, child and the question correctly or not you can all the teachers can go through with it now the next thing that we have are ebooks ebooks is same as how we talked about in teachers section and it's course book and storybooks then we have whiteboard uh, whiteboard is there for a child as well they can also save it to use it later then the child also has individual access for digital manipulatives, which include manipulatives and simulations. Then they can also go for Sudoku, word search, and operation calculator. So the child has to use all of these, you know, exactly as how I showed it to you in the teacher's account. And a learner's account, the learners can also view a subject-wide reports. In order to do that, uh, they have to go here. And let's say they want to look for an English report, they can click on the subject. And all the worksheets that, may, that they might have submitted, all the objective report, the subjective report, and everything that a child must have done is visible under this particular tab. So um, I think uh, that's it from the learner's uh, profile and the learner section. So if you guys have any questions, you can please ask me the questions. Okay. Uh, there's a question in the chat. Yeah, there, there's a question that says, according to you, which grade onwards kids can use the digital support independently? Uh, you know, in my opinion, uh, these days, uh, the children are very much tech savvy. Um, as soon as they turn three years, four years old, uh, they are able to use, uh, you know, uh, their parents' phone uh, perfectly well and even better than their uh, parents. So I guess it's, it's, it's about, uh, you know, how much exposure uh, they have with the app. So once they start using it, all the students are going to, uh, you know, Within no time, they're going to learn how to use this app. Okay, and oh, there is one another question that says, uh, will there be some induction training conducted for students? Uh, Ma'am, actually, there is no uh, particular training that is going to be conducted for students. Uh, this uh, has to be the responsibility of the facilitator to you know explain and the kids how to use this particular app. 
So uh, do we have any, any more questions? Okay, so uh, I guess this is all from my side. So thank you so much.